one thing that I think about is when is a political solution going to end this calamity that is inflicted on millions of Syrians, but also hundreds of thousands of Palestine refugees. And since I was just in Aleppo, I can say that that's exactly what young Palestinians who are another generation of Palestinians facing the trauma of displacement, loss of homes, loss of friends and relatives are expecting of the international community to do. But does, doesn't this uh, expose again the failure of the world community to do anything to stop it? It's now in its seventh year. Yes, this is one of the weakest links in the international system, is the ability to bring about conflict resolution. We've had conflict management for too long, and in a way the very existence of an organization like UNRWA is a reminder both of what you can do for people in situations of crisis, but of course also a daily reminder of the failure of the political conflict resolution dynamics. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mrs. Mogherini has an, another book in Syria. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, the humanitarian situation is uh, devastating in Syria. What has to be done to help all these people? Well, the first thing is you have to be on the ground. And when I was in Aleppo last week, I met the 240 UNRWA staff, all of my Palestinian colleagues who have been throughout these six years on the front line of delivering humanitarian assistance to the people. But I also have to say that in my 25 years of working in conflict zones, I'd never seen a devastation of the scale and scope of what I saw in the eastern parts of Aleppo. And meeting the families of Palestine refugees who are still just under half a million in Syria and are another generation of Palestinians who have to go through the trauma of displacement, loss of home, loss of employment and opportunities, the message is very clear. When will this end? And it's a reminder to the international community that conflict resolution is what we need now more than anything else. I'm very proud of the work that we do in education for Palestine refugees, in the delivery of health and other activities. But at the end of the day, I don't want UNRWA to be the horizon for young Palestine refugees in their lives. There should be something else for them. Commissioner, the situation of the schools in Andrua schools in Syria. Yes, we had a hundred school buildings for sixty-six thousand Palestine refugee children in Syria before the war. Up to seventy percent of those cannot be used currently, either because they're destroyed or damaged in areas that are difficult to access or are being used to shelter displaced people from the conflict. And so this is a message also to the importance of preserving safe and secure areas of learning. And what is the most remarkable in what UNRWA has achieved, in my view, in the Syrian context, is that from the 66,000 after a first year of conflict, the number of students in school dropped to 20,000. We're back to 45,000 because we found innovative ways of delivering the education, both uh, through school buildings, but also new methods, including using an UNRWA television station that brought, broadcasts education programs from the Gaza Strip of all places. What about the displacement of the Palestinians inside Syria? 65% of the remaining 440,000 Palestine refugees in Syria are displaced internally, and some of them have been displaced numerous times. And this, of course, when you meet them, you realize that this is one of the unique features of Palestinians compared to the Syrians, because, of course, all of them are exposed to the same levels of violence and devastation. The one big difference for Palestinians is that in their heart and souls, they know what displacement means because that is the very reason that brought them originally to Syria as refugees, and now it's another generation that has to go through this trauma. Commissioner General, in German, was there a war prime in Idlib? <clears throat> well, I must say, it is natürlich absolut a catastrophic situation in Idlib. Man muss man sagen, UNRWA arbeitet nicht in dieser Provinz. Wir haben also keine uh, Information, die direkt uh, über diesen Zwischenfall. Uh, wir berichten können, aber es ist natürlich eine Erinnerung daran, wie alltäglich dieser Konflikt sich auswirkt auf die Zivilbevölkerung, ob das nun Syrer sind oder Palästinenser in diesem Umfeld. Und da muss man sich weiterhin engagieren, damit sich das ändert und nur eine friedliche Lösung kann dazu beitragen.
Okay, it's in English. What does it mean for me to be here? I think the most important point is that uh, events like these allow us to bring the human dimension of a conflict situation like Syria into the conference grounds. Uh, we have to move beyond speaking about international humanitarian law. We have to move beyond speaking about conflict management. We have to speak about the impact on human beings. When I was in Aleppo last week, I met young students of UNRWA, Palestine refugees, who have been injured in the war, who are deeply traumatized, and yet are looking for a space to recreate their lives. That space are the UNRWA schools, where we deliver education still to 45,000 students. And tell me about Idlib this morning. What are your views in English? Um, you said it to these guys about what happened in Idlib. Well, you know, the, the catastrophe of what happened in Idlib is a reminder of what happens to civilians in conflict zones, and in particular in the Syrian conflict today, every single day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a strong focus on the outrageous act that took place in Idlib. But we remember every single day for six years, civilians, be they Syrians or Palestinians, have gone through this calamity. Tell us about UNRWA's education programs, because you put out a press release yesterday saying that 70% of the schools are inoperable. What's all that about? So we have, we had 100 school buildings in Syria before the war for 66,000 students. About 70% of these can no longer be accessed, either because they're damaged or destroyed. They're in areas that are hard to reach, or are being used to shelter displaced people from the conflict. So we've had to find innovative ways to increase again the number of students that we're educating in Syria, Palestine refugees, 45,000 now. We're using alternative school and education buildings, but we're also using innovative methods, self-learning material. And one of the things that I find remarkable, UNRWA television station broadcasting from the Gaza Strip disseminates education programs. Can we do something in French now? So tell us in French today, um, was there a war crime in Italy? Non, l'UNRWA n'est pas en position de confirmer ça parce que c'est euh, une région dans laquelle nous ne travaillons pas. Mais il est clair que c'est un acte d'une extrême gravité. Ça a toute l'apparence d'une un, violation majeure du droit international humanitaire et en ça, les Nations Unies ont déjà condamné cet acte. And what is UNRWA doing here? Donc pour l'UNRWA, c'est extrêmement important de venir à des conférences comme ici à Bruxelles parce que c'est le moment pour amener la dimension humaine dans une telle conférence, l'impact et les conséquences humaines de ce conflit majeur et en particulier de rappeler au monde qu'il ne faut pas oublier la situation des réfugiés de Palestine qui sont présents en Syrie depuis 60 ans, qui ont en leur âme une connaissance intime de ce que c'est que d'être déplacés, de perdre leur lieu de résidence, leur domicile, leur emploi, leur lieu de travail. Et le monde doit se souvenir et doit aussi intégrer la souffrance de cette communauté dans l'analyse qui se fait ici à Bruxelles. And just look at the camera and say, I'm Pierre Crenbull, I'm the Commissioner General of UNRWA. Just to identify. Mon nom est Pierre Crenbull, je suis le Commissaire Général de l'UNRWA. En anglais. My name is Pierre Crenbull, I'm the Commissioner General of UNRWA, the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees.